This is the video lesson for f equals ma. In this video, we're going to learn how to use Newton's second law equation to solve different kinds of word problems. What does f equals ma tell us? So the equation f equals ma is Newton's second law. In equation form. So F stands for force. M is mass. And A is acceleration. So force is in Newtons, which is equal to kilograms meters per second squared. Mass, of course, is in kilograms. And acceleration is in meters per second squared. So you can see when we multiply mass times acceleration, we get kilograms meters per second squared, which is equal to newtons. So acceleration we can think of as being change in velocity over time. So delta V is equal to the initial, the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. So that's how we can think of acceleration. And the arrows just tell us that these are vectors. So force is a vector and acceleration is a vector. So we've learned this before. So this is Newton's second, second law in equation format. So solving the equation of force equals ma for different variables let, tells us different things or allows us to solve for different information. So force equals ma, if we're given the mass and the acceleration, we can find force. If we solve for acceleration, if we know the force and we know the mass, then we can find the acceleration. Similarly, if we know the force and we know the acceleration, we can find the mass. Let's look at an example using F equals MA to find the force. So we've got this diagram here of three blocks hanging from strings. So block X is hanging from one string, block Y is hanging from a string under the block X, and then block Z is hanging from a string under block Y. So if each block X, Y, and Z have an identical mass of five kilograms and the entire hanging system is at rest, what is, are the tensions in each line attacking each, attaching each block to the one above it? Okay, so we're going to start with a free body diagram for block X. Okay, so this force is a tension force for block X. We have two forces hanging down here. We have the force of the of g. So we have the mass of block x times g and then we have another force hanging down and this is the force of tension on the rope and this is the force of tension for block y and z. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see if we can figure out some of the values of this. So this is mass of x times g. So the Block, the mass of, of block X is 5 kilograms times G will use 10 meters per second squared. So that's equal to 50 newtons. All right. So then we have the force of tension hanging down for blocks Y and Z. So we're talking about the, the tension on this, on this rope right here, that line. Um, and so this line is holding up block Y and block Z. So basically it's just holding up the mass of these two blocks. We don't have, we don't have to worry about the, the mass of the line. We're assuming that these lines are uh, essentially massless. So we have the mass of block Y and we have plus the mass of block Z times g. That's going to give us this 
tension force here. So that's equal to five kilograms plus five kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So that's 10 times 10. So that's equal to 100 newtons. OK, so we've got our forces here. What we don't know is the force of tension here. OK, so we're going to do a sum of forces. So we do sum of forces in the y direction. So we have our force of tension in x minus our force of mxg minus our force of tension in yz. OK, and that all equals 0. Because remember, we have f equals ma. We have f equals ma. And the acceleration, remember, is 0. So it doesn't matter what's on the right side here. It doesn't matter that what the mass is because acceleration is zero. So this whole side of the right side of the equation is zero. So we can just set the whole right side of the equation equal to zero. So if we rewrite this equation, we have solving for the, the uh, tension in X, we have MXG on the right side now. So we've just moved these two forces to the right side. So we have T, Y, Z. So we have the tension force of Y and G, and we have the mass times the gravity of block X. So we know these values now. We know these two values. So we have F, T, X is equal to 50 newtons for the mass or for the gravitational force of block X plus 100 newtons, which is the, the tension force hanging on block Y and block Z. So that is equal to 150 newtons. So our force, uh, so our tension force hanging uh, on this wire, on this line right here is 150 newtons. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at the tension force for block Y. So let's probably draw a free body diagram. All right, so we have the tension force for block Y. And then we have the gravitational force for block Y itself. So that's MY. my times g and then we also have the tension force for block z so that's the tension force force tension for block z all right <clears throat> so let's assign some values to these so we know that the the force of gravity on block Y is the mass of block Y. So that's five kilograms times G, which is 10 meters per second squared. So that's equal to 50 Newtons. And then the force of tension on block uh, from block Z is just, so that's this. So we're talking about this wire right here, that string, whatever it is. So that is going to be just the mass of block Z. So that's 
So that's going to be another five kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So that's equal to 50 newtons. Okay, so let's do the sum of forces. So we have sum of forces in the y direction is equal to the tension force of block Y. So that's this guy right here. Minus, we have the force of gravity from block Y. So that's the mass of Y times G. And then minus again, the force of tension from block Z. And we know it's stationary, we know it's at rest. So that all equals zero. So if I solve this equation for the force of tension on Y, the force of tension on Y is equal to the force of gravity from mass from the block Y plus force of tension on from block Z. So we know that the force of gravity from block Y is 50 newtons and the tension is 50 newtons. So we have the force of tension on block Y is gonna be 100 newtons. So this right here is equal to 100 newtons. So this here we'll say is 100 newtons. Okay, lastly we want to figure out the force of tension on this wire or string here. So that's going to be the force of tension from Z. Okay, so we're going to draw a free body diagram here. All right, so we have the force of tension from Z. We have offsetting that is the force of gravity. So that's the mass of Z times G. So that we know is five kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So that's equal to 50 newtons. We have our sum of forces sum of forces in the y direction is equal to the tension force from z minus the mass, or the gravitational force rather, from Z, which is equal to zero. We know it's zero because there's no acceleration. So solving this for um, the tension force, we have force of tension is equal to the force of gravity. So we have tension force is equal to 50 newtons. So that's our answer. So we have 50 newtons. So you can see for our final answer for everything that block Z, the tension force from block Z is 50 newtons. The tension force from block Y and block Z is 100 newtons. And then the tension force from block X, Y, and Z is 150 newtons. All right, let's look at a problem where we're going to try and find the acceleration. So we have in a lab a block weighing 80 newtons is attached to a spring scale and both are pulled to the right on a horizontal surface as shown above. Friction between the block and the surface is negligible, so we don't have to worry about friction. What is the acceleration of the block when the scale reads 32 newtons? Okay, so we're looking for acceleration. So we have 
the gravitational force, so force G is equal to 80 newtons. Friction is negligible. We have the acceleration is what we're looking for. So acceleration is question mark. And then the applied force is going to equal 32 newtons. Okay, so we know that Fg is equal to 80 newtons, but what we need is the mass. So mass equals question mark. So remember that Fg is equal to m times g, where g is 10 meters per second squared. So solving for mass, we have Fg over g equals mass. So that would be 80 newtons divided by 10 meters per second squared would give us 8 kilograms. So the mass of our block is 8 kilograms. Okay. So, if we were to draw a free body diagram of this, we have our friction force, or excuse me, our gravitational force, Fmg is equal to 80 newtons. We have a normal force up here, which is equal to 80 newtons. And then we have this applied force. which is equal to 32 newtons. And we want to figure out the acceleration. Okay, so we have force is equal to ma. We can see from our equation up here that acceleration is equal to force over mass. So changing our equation around a little bit, we have acceleration is equal to force over mass. So we know our force is going to be 32 newtons. We figured out our mass of 8 kilograms. So we have 32 newtons divided by 8 kilograms. It's going to give us an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. All right, let's look at number 3 where we're going to find force. So we have a five kilogram object is released from rest near the surface of a planet such that its gravitational field is considered to be constant. The mass of the planet is unknown. After two seconds, the object has fallen 30 meters. Air resistance is considered to be negligible. So we're not dealing with any air resistance. What is the gravitational force exerted on the object near the planet's surface? Okay, so we're trying to figure out Fg. All right, so this is a two-step problem. First, we need to figure out the acceleration due to gravity. So first, we have to figure out G. So to do that, we're going to use a kinematics equation. So we're going to use Y equals Y0 plus V0 T plus one-half a t squared. So this is uh, the exact same as the kinematic equation in x. So x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one-half a t squared, except now we're doing it in the y axis because the object is falling. Okay, so y naught, we're going to say is zero. The initial velocity is zero, so those terms go away. So now we have y is equal to one-half a t squared. So our initial, or our final position y is going to be this 30 meters. We have our time of two seconds. So we're trying to figure out a, the acceleration due to gravity, which is the same thing as g. So we have 30 meters is equal to 0.5 times, we'll call this G, times 2 seconds squared. So we have 30 meters is equal to, so 0.5 
times 4 is 2, so we have 2g. So this would be second squared. So we end up with g is equal to 15 meters per second squared. Okay, so now that we have g, we can calculate our gravitational force. So fg, remember, is equal to mass times g. So we have our mass, we have our g, so the force of gravity in this problem is going to be, so fg is going to equal 5 kilograms times 15 meters per second squared. So that's going to equal 75 newtons.